Hello friends, welcome. Friends, on 18th of June 2025, Vodafone Idea and AST Space Mobile announced a partnership. The title of this press release is VI AST Space Mobile Announced Partnership for Satellite Connectivity. Now, if you go through this press release, you will find that this partnership is quite distinct from the partnership which Airtel and Starlink and Reliance Geo has announced recently. How it is different? So let's look into this. If you look at this, this press release, because that was not an editable document, it says that the company is building, which is AST, Space Mobile, the first only space-based cellular broadband network accessible directly to everybody's smartphone. So this is the use, see this word smartphone. Whereas in case of Airtel and Reliance Geo, this is not about smart smartphone. This is about fixed wireless access terminal, similar to what Bharti Airtel and Reliance Geo already providing using 5G network. So these are going to be rooftop terminal. But here, the VI and AST partnership is going to be on smartphone. Now, friends, why I'm doing this video today? The reason I am doing this video today is not only to explain the difference between these two sets of partnership. One is that VI and AST and Starlink and Bharti Airtel and Reliance Geo, but also to analyze whether this partnership of VI and AST Mobile in India can get executed. Means, can it be rolled, can services be rolled out in India quickly, whether the regulatory framework exists or not? That's the whole idea about this video because by making a partnership means nothing because AST Mobile will get a license, no doubt about that. But whether Spectrum can be accessible or not, what kind of regulatory bottleneck they will face is what we are going to discuss, friends. So friends, what I have done is I have created a slide deck and this slide deck is going to provide a reference for this discussion. And as soon as there are certain things which needs to be referred to, I'm going to the specific document and show you the specific document so that you can get the proof why I am making a certain point in this presentation. So the title of the presentation is AST Vodafone Idea Partnership, Regulatory Technical Strategic Implication for Satellite Based Direct to Mobile Services in India. Because as I told you, these are going to be on smartphones, whereas the Starlink and Reliance Geo and Bharti Airtel partnership is a FWA equivalent. Means those devices are going to be on the rooftop and the broadband connectivity is going to be provided on your computer, right? But this partnership is talking about providing connectivity on the smartphones. So the introduction is that Vodafone Idea partners with AST Space Mobile to provide direct to mobile connectivity and it is almost an extension of the Vodafone UK partnership with AST Mobile. Just they had done recently, I think in the month of March 2025. Now AST aims to use VI's existing spectrum. Now this is the difference. Starlink is not using Bharti Airtel's and Reliance Geo's existing IMT spectrum, which is what? which is the 800, 900, 2100, 1800, 2500, 2300, 3500 megahertz spectrum. They have a new spectrum, which is going to be at the K and the KU band, which is going to be around 10 gigahertz, 11 gigahertz, 14 gigahertz, 15 gigahertz, so higher frequency bands, right? Whereas the IMT spectrum at a lower frequency band. So there is no integration of spectrum, no sharing of spectrum, no leasing of spectrum. Now, AST's partnership with Vodafone will not work without AST Mobile sharing Vodafone's 5G and 4G spectrum because they have to access commercial mobile. For that, they have to use the same spectrum on which Vodafone Idea is offering 4G and 5G services. So how this partnership differed, you know, you know with the Starlink partnership? Already I have told you, Starlink in India partnered with Reliance Geo and Bharti and focused on Logistic and broadband reselling, not a spectrum sharing or a leasing deal, right? Not about smartphone. It's got nothing to do with smartphone. Whereas VI and AST partnership aims to use satellite for terrestrial D2M services, direct to mobile services, provide services in those areas where mobile connectivity of 4G and 5G or Vodafone idea is absent. So VI approach is strategically distinct and more ambitious. Now D2M spectrum use and global trend. 
Now, friends, this type of partnership of VI with AST Mobile is not a unique partnership. Starling recently did a partnership or with T-Mobile in US because Starling has got two different sets of satellite. One satellite is for broadband. Another is, is a narrowband satellite which works on the T-Mobile's existing 4G and 5G spectrum, which is in the 1900 US PCS band. So they are transmitting in the same block of spectrum which T-Mobile is offering their 4G or 5G services, which is the PCS spectrum, right? So the model reuses the IMT spectrum of 4G and 5G for extending satellite delivery. Means the coverage may not be throughout the geography because in some places you cannot provide your base stations because it may not be viable. So use the satellite as a medium to extend 4G and 5G coverage, which is Star Starling and T-Mobile uh, you know, partnership in US is accomplishing. So the objective is to extend mobile reach without using any special equipment. Means the same mobile phone, which is the commercial mobile phone in which you are receiving 5G and 4G services can be used for connecting with the satellite with a lower frequency band in the commercial IMT spectrum. Now, in India, if you try to implement what has been implemented in US, which is Starling and T-Mobile, you will find that the regulatory framework is absent. Why? Because TRA only recommends opening up KAKU band for broadband and L and S band for voice and data, which I can show you in the TRA's recommendations. So if you see the summary of the TRA recommendation, which they came out on the 9th of May 2025, which provides the framework of Starlink connect connectivity in India, the pricing and spectrum bands and the rules of usage, everything. So this is the summary of recommendation, so which you can see that for broadband data communication, which is the fixed service, you know, FWA type of connection, we have got the KU band, the KA band and the Q and V band should be considered. It clearly says, TRA clearly said, authority recommends, recommends that these are the only bands which are considered. These are not IMT band. But for voice, text and data communication and internet services, which is narrow band services, L band, which is 1400 megahertz band and S band, which is 2.5 gigahertz band, should be considered, right? So L and S band for user links and C and K, K, KU and KA band and QE band for feeder links. Now, somebody may say that Vodafone Idea already has spectrum in S band, which is the 2.5 gigahertz band. Yes, it has, but there are more complications, friends, which we are going to talk about. And this spectrum, which Vodafone Idea has, is an, is an auction spectrum Though it is an auction spectrum, but how to share spectrum, the guidelines for sharing spectrum, leasing spectrum has not been defined. Though S-band spectrum Vodafone Idea already has in the 2.5 gigahertz band, right? So no spectrum sharing rules for hybrid terrestrial satellite network. No provision exists from leasing ter terrestrial IMT spectrum for satellite players. Now, what is hybrid network? Now, for, for that, friends, you need to go to my article. In this article, I actually have a diagram which speaks about hybrid network. So hybrid network is, let's say if you have a satellite on the on the top and satellite has got coverage here and then there, are, there is a terrestrial coverage, you know, which is on the side. So this terrestrial coverage is covering only this part of the geography. There is no coverage here of, for terrestrial. So what satellite is going to do? They are going to use the same block of spectrum, which is used for transmitting. These BTSs are transmitting and to cover those areas where there are no terrestrial coverage. It is not going to superimpose. This satellite is not going to superimpose on the terrestrial coverages because it is going to interfere. It's not going to work like that. It has to be on a exclude in an area where there are no terrestrial coverage, right? So we need to need a policy we need, we need for policy evolution. DOT and TRA must define leasing and sharing framework of IMT bands. Now, if you look at the sharing recommendation of TRAI, which they came out recently, and this was on 24th April 2024. Now, this is the framework. Interband sharing among TSPs. Now, AST Mobile can be one of the TSPs. So, it basically says that there are only three categories of sharing for interband, right? Let's say if TST Mobile holds the band, which is the Starling bands, one of the block of spectrum, but it does not have spectrum in any of the category bands. Category one, which is 600, 700, 800, 900, 
category 2 is 1800 and 2100 and category 3 is 2300 2500 and 3500 and category 4 4 are these are the bands right so in order for this tra sharing recommendation to work you need to have spectrum in any of these band to be able to access the spectrum band of the other operator for example you need to have spectrum in 600 megahertz band to able to access or share spectrum in the 800 megahertz band and there are no leasing guidelines the existing sharing guidelines are these which are which have been issued by dot on 11th of october 2021 and this does not talk about leasing there is no way you can lease spectrum and the framework is completely different and without the current framework of leasing and using the existing imt spectrum framework being defined by dot and tri ast mobile cannot deploy these services so we need the tra and dot to refine to must define a leasing and sharing framework let me change my color of my pen and then requires a new regulation and industry consultation implementation will be complex and time consuming right now there are some technical challenges and risk friend which is going to be more than defining sharing rules and other kind of guidelines from both dot as well as from tri and I, let me explain to you what i mean by this this is absolutely critical friends now using vi spectrum by ast would interfere with reliance geo bharti's or VOI's own terrestrial network. Why? Because in India, we have got circle-wise spectrum assignment. We don't have spectrum assignment of IMT, which is harmonious across India. Now, how do I explain to you this? So for that, friends, I have created a, uh, you can say a simulation. Now, this is 900 megahertz border map. So friends, what I will do is, I will take, this is basically, what I've done is, I've done a, a more or less like, you can say a CT scan right ct scan of india of various type of operators using the same chunk of spectrum which is 200 megahertz and how that chunk of spectrum collides with the other operator spectrum which are kind of conflicts on the border of the license service area for example if you see let me just go and you know run this and you will be able to see and i'll do it in a fast manner so you see that vodafone idea is red right but you see, Vodafone idea, Haryana is colliding with UP's Bharti. And these boundaries will keep on changing with time with 900 megahertz band. So if Vodafone idea wants to use 900 megahertz, it will find it very difficult because the AST mobile, if they are operating in Vodafone idea spectrum in a particular circle, let me give you an example. Let me just uh, freeze, freeze this. Uh, just a minute. So I'll freeze this. For example, let's say Vodafone idea UP. It is operating in 900 megahertz band then it is going to collide with Bharti spectrum in Haryana, right? So, and then we have got Vodafone idea operating in Tamil Nadu. It is going to collide with Bharti spectrum in Kerala because these, these maps, which are collusion, which is going to be the boundary, is going to lay out the boundary of the LSA. You can't be having those, uh, you know, transmission in such a way that you are able to meticulously prevent interference in the adjoining uh, LSA, which belongs to a separate service provider, which is operating in the same spectrum band. And that's the problem that we have in 900. Similarly, if you see in the 1800 megahertz spectrum band, and if I run this and we do it fast, you will see that how these assignments, this is again a CT scam at a 200 kilohertz chunk. You will see that how these assignments will keep on changing with, with frequency. So there will be border collusion. And this is the fundamental flaw of Indian spectrum assignment, which I have been saying from the very beginning with the new technology coming in, we had to give spectrum on a pan-India basis. If you don't give spectrum on a pan-India basis, then these kind of border interference is going to happen. And it will be extremely difficult to use the existing spectrum, right, to offer, to extend the coverage of, of 4G and 5G network and without interfering with a neighboring operators network so you need to have not only partnership with vodafone idea but partnership with all the three so that the this kind of connectivity is possible right then the same thing which you will find in the 2100 megahertz spectrum band i am going to run this slow and you'll see that the same problem we are going to see in 2100 megahertz spectrum band because initially it is basically the 2100 is for defense government and then as you move forward in 5 megahertz chunk you'll see that there will be collusion with different operator spectrum and different service area. The border interference are already there, right? You can clearly see that these border interference can show up. So because of this problem, 
it will be very difficult to operate in India because spectrum is not harmonious. Same across all the LSA for the particular operator. And the other problem is that this kind of, you know, usage of spectrum where the terrestrial is also transmitting, where the, where the satellite is also transmitting and there is a possibility of interference between sat terrestrial and satellite. There will be areas where there will be no man zone. So signaling of that particular network has to coordinate very tightly because you need to hand off from the terrestrial to the satellite network as soon as the coverage shifts from one point to another point. For that, there are no standard ITU and the 3GPP standardization which has happened. So ITU and 3GPP is working to come out with a framework. As they come out with the framework, this working of satellite and the terrestrial network in the same spectrum band seamlessly will become possible and that is going to happen in near future. So, and I'm going to show you uh, just one more document which is extremely important for you to have a look. Now, if you look at the Starling and T-Mobile, this is the FCC document which was, which, which was released just recently before this framework could have been enabled in US, which says that operation in the 1900 band, megahertz band, which is the T-Mobile's band, it says that SpaceX may provide SCS, means secondary uh, coverage, uh, on, a, on a secondary basis using the 1900 megahertz Earth to space and 1900 megahertz, 1995 from uh, space to Earth band, but SpaceX... SCS operation may not cause harmful interference to the T-Mobile's network and are not entitled to interference protection from any primary services operating in this band. So this is very clearly mentioned here. And there were other operators have been raising a lot of problems, questions here that whether they will interfere in an adjacent uh, you know, operation of the uh, other terrestrial operator, which is operating adjacent to the band which the T-Mobile is operating. So this is clearly mentioned here, right? You can see here. So it has to take make sure that there are no terrestrial interference happening because of satellite. So the operational feasibility in India, AST may receive GMPS license, but the service rollout requires reconfiguring of IMT bands. Or there has to be a partnership with all the three so that everybody can collaborate with each other. Need to have clear coordination rule or exclusive band allocation, right? So the conclusion is that VI-AST partnership is visionary, visionary but... There are a lot of hurdles and the regu regulatory and technical hurdles they will face. Policy cl clarity and standardization are crucial and operation deployment will take a lot of time. Now, there could be another option which I spoke out in my article. So, if you go to my article here, you'll see that this article talks about various options. One of the options is to use, you know, L-band. Now, L-band is already being used by Global Star. So, there is already an, an, a kind of a partnership with of Starling with Global Star in US. Where, and TRI talks about L-band in India. You know, how L-band can be used and how it can be shared among various operators, right? But, it can't be used because those devices which are deployed on ground should have the capability to receive signals in L-band. That is one. Second is that L-band in India is not free because of NAVIC operations there. This band, which, which Global Star is using internationally, is not free here. And, they, and it will not be available. S-band, you know, there are other problems of devas. You know, there's a lot of issue in S-band. So S-band is a very complicated story. I don't want. So, so it has. there will be no other option but to use the existing spectrum of the IMT operators, right? So friends, that's all in this video. I hope that you probably found this video very interesting. And thanks again for watching till the end. And I'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time. Thank you very much, friends.